Hey everyone, it's Nicole here from Bake to Jour, and today we are going over the French method of making macarons, but with a twist, we're going to learn how to successfully make these puppies without resting them. I've heard of a lot of people doing this. I had never done it successfully though, until now. So, let's figure oh. out <laughs> how to make these macarons. So first thing first, surprisingly, you don't need to switch anything with your ingredients or your recipe. I switched nothing of the sort, but I did switch the time where I turned on my oven to preheat. If you checked out the live, you saw that I did not preheat my oven until I was piping my macarons, which is what I'm accustomed to because I don't like to have my oven running for a long time because I usually rest for 20 to 25 minutes. So in that live, I put my tray into my oven before it was properly preheated. I don't know about your guys' ovens, but my gas conventional oven tends to spike up in temperature if I put something into it that's cold before it's preheated. So it will compensate for the cold tray and just shoot up in temperature to make sure it reaches that goal of what I'm, I set it to and it ends up going like 25 to 30 degrees higher than I want it. So we got lots of cracked macarons during that live. So let's go through the process of how to make no rest method work for you and the beginning process is preheat your oven before you start. Once you preheat your oven, let's just go through the macaron process quickly. If you need more instruction on macarons, if this is your first time making them, I suggest going to my Macaron 101 video. I will link it above. <coughs> Click on that and it will take you to a full tutorial, step-by-step -step of how to make macarons successfully with the recipe in the description. So for this time, like I said, I changed nothing in my recipe. I am mixing up my egg whites till they're nice and foamy. I'll add in my sugar and egg white powder together into my meringue. And once all that sugar is dissolved, I will add in my coloring. Here I added redwood powdered coloring from the Sugar Art. Again, if you want a discount when purchasing the Sugar Art products, you can use Bake to Jour at checkout. After I put in my coloring, I'm just gonna keep whipping my meringue until I reach stiff peaks. Once you get to a nice stiff peak and you have a strong and sturdy meringue, you're ready to add in your dries. Here I'm putting in my dries in a couple additions and just incorporating those dries and not deflating at this point. Once all my dries are incorporated, my batter is still really airy. So at this point, we're gonna start the macronage process, which is deflating your batter to the right consistency. So I'm just pushing out the air, and with my spatula, I'm just pressing down against the bowl and bringing the batter up and over with my spatula, and then down again, up and over. And I'm slowly turning the bowl as well. Once you have a smooth batter that flows off your spatula nicely and doesn't break, you're ready to pop your batter into a piping bag fitted with a tip that is to your liking. I use a nine millimeter tip for my circular macarons, which is about equivalent to a Wilton 12. I'm just gonna pipe out my macarons on my air bake tray. So this is where we also differ. So one, we preheated our oven before we started our macarons, and two, now I am using an air bake tray. So this tray is an insulated tray, and it causes your max to rise a little bit slower, and this is what I have found to be key. Once I was done piping, I just tapped out my tray and then popped it in the oven and said a little prayer, <laughs> because that is nerve wracking. I usually turn my oven down in temperature to 275. So I actually only turned it down to about 285. I wanted to make sure it wasn't too low of heat 
in my oven because this is an insulated air bake tray. And when it's insulated, it does have a nice slow rise for your macaron, but it also sometimes can cause concave shells. So that's when you take your, your shell off the mat and it's concave on the inside. And that's usually due to too low of heat. So I wanted to combat that with my air bake tray so I didn't lower it as much. So my internal oven temperature actually stayed around 305 Fahrenheit instead of my normal drop down to 275. So my oven temperature stays around 290 to 300. So I baked a tiny bit higher temperatures for this and I think I also over baked a little bit. I baked three extra minutes because the air bake tray bakes differently, it didn't look done to me. So this is something I will have to figure out more and you will as well with your oven, how long to bake them. But I baked three extra minutes, so a total of 24 minutes on these macarons and I think it was one minute too much. After 10 minutes, I rotate my tray in the oven for even baking and they were all looking beautiful. So I was a very happy camper when trying this. The ability to be able to pipe these and just pop them in the oven is a huge game changer, especially if you're in a humid environment and it takes hours for your macarons to usually dry. This could be your answer. Once these were all cooled, I took them off the mat, hoping not to see concave shells and we didn't, so that was awesome. And I filled these with the chocolate buttercream from my video on the love letter macarons. So you can check that recipe out, I'll link it above. So I filled with that chocolate buttercream and then I paired it with a little bit of raspberry marshmallow buttercream in the middle. So it's that marshmallow buttercream recipe from Brave Tart with some freeze dried raspberries inside. It's phenomenal and they're really great together. I recommend trying them together. It's delicious. And there you go, we have these beautiful macarons. I love being able to see a little bit of both, the raspberry filling and the chocolate for these ones. So, cause I know it's not gonna ooze out. So it's not as important to have that dam of the chocolate buttercream, you can kind of have both showing. Um, so I have them ooze out a little bit. I kind of overfill the middle. And then we matured them. And let's see if we can hear a little bit of a crunch if they're a little overbaked. Mmm. They really matured up nicely. I was wrong. Oh my gosh, this is like my favorite flavor right now. I'm sorry, you shouldn't be watching me, I feel like, as I enjoy this. It's so good. It's very airy and light. And I was wrong, it's not overbaked. So that 24 minutes was good for my oven. It could be different for yours. Um, dang, that's good. I really felt like I was winning at life after I did this method because I was saving so much time and my kids didn't even have a moment to go crazy yet. They were occupied for the whole time I was doing macarons because it was so fast. So I highly recommend trying this method out, seeing if it works for you. If you have questions or comments, please comment down below. I wanna send a special extra shout out to Tiana from Whisk ATX. She is instrumental in the reason why I tried this method and she's a rock star. So go give her love on Instagram. She is amazing. And I wanted to thank all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also ring the bell to receive notifications when new content comes up. And per usual, I will sing you out just because I get nervous to say goodbye. So goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Peace out, you guys. Have a good one. I hope you save a ton of time with this method and make these beautiful maps.